A while ago, I think it was in the theater for Hardcore Henry, and they ran a trailer for this movie called The Bye Bye Man. I didn't think the movie looked all that bad. It was a different trailer than they used more recently. And I'm almost positive that at the end of the trailer, it said that it was rated R. The movie dropped off my radar, and it popped up a little while ago when uh, they started running new spots for it. And as I feared, the movie was delayed so they could get the ever-popular PG-13 rating. Still, even though it had a terrible name, I thought it looked interesting. It was kind of a combination of Slender Man, A Nightmare on Elm Street, and Candyman. The movie's about two best friends and the one guy's girlfriend, and they're going to college together, and they decide that they're going to rent a house off campus. They rent this dilapidated old house, and while they're fixing it up, they find this old end table. And inside the table, somebody had written, don't think it, don't say it, don't think it, don't say it, like a million times. And finally, the bye-bye man. And the one guy ends up saying the bye-bye man. And that puts the thought in all their heads. So much like the game, if you think about it, you lose. They try to not think about the bye-bye man because the more they think about him, the stronger he gets. And if they say the bye-bye man and somebody else hears it, that passes on like a virus, a little ponty pool in a way. What I liked about it, I do think the idea was interesting. And apparently it was based on a book, so I have no idea how faithful it is to the book. I'm curious to track it down to see if things played out a little bit differently because uh, I was intrigued by it, but I thought that the, uh, the execution was severely lacking. So really, aside from the concept, that's kind of about the only good thing I can say about it. The bad? Oh, the bad is a little bit longer of a list. First of all, I am not against PG-13 horror. I am against movies that are filmed to be R-rated, and then they edit them down to be PG-13, because you can always tell. Uh, This one, oh, this had some of the most blatant either reshoots or just removals of blood and guts I've seen in quite a while. A couple examples, not going to spoil anything. There were some scenes where people were, let's say, bloody. And what they did was they zoomed in and cropped the screen to hide as much blood and guts as possible. And if they didn't, then the shots were so horrendously laid out. Like, the only thing I could possibly think of was that was what they did. Because there was one in particular where there's a character who walks around and there's somebody who took a bullet to the chest and they're laying on the floor and the way that it moved around it moved up and out and like pushed the thing out of frame it looked horrible it looked like you ever watch the old pan and scan movies where they would take a widescreen movie and they would condense it to four by three and if something's happening at one end of the screen they would you know it would have that digital pan this was that bad it was like the guy came around the corner and the camera sort of moved up and out so we couldn't see what was over in the lower left hand side it was bad it was really bad The worst had to be, there's a guy who was running around with a shotgun, and he was shooting people. And he's shooting people point blank with a shotgun. Absolutely no blood whatsoever. Uh, He shot one guy, and he's trying to get information out of him. And the guy's on the ground, and he's, please don't! No bullet wound, no blood anywhere. And then he shoots somebody else who's backing away and they hit a wall and they fall over. No bullet wound, no blood on the wall. It was terrible. It took me right out of the film. That shit is why people hate when R-rated movies are neutered to PG-13. It's ridiculous. The other thing, the actress, um, I don't know her name, but she was the character Sasha. She was terrible. There's a scene in the film where uh, everything is kind of coming together. She's figuring out what's going on and she's uh, confiding in her boyfriend, Elliot. And she just doesn't cry, doesn't do anything, just kind of puts her head in her hands and goes, oh no, what is happening? The emotion of a turnip. Just zero, no feeling whatsoever that their lives were in danger, that uh, anything was wrong. It was the most flat, awful delivery. And she did that a few times. There was a couple of uh, other scenes where it was like, I don't know what is happening. Why are these things going on, Elliot? She was terrible. 
This dips a teeny bit into spoiler territory, but it's nothing story related. It's just really lame. In Elliot and Sasha's bedroom, there's this coat hanging on a coat hanger. And every so often, the coat is the bye-bye man. And they did it, uh, I think, three or four times where um, they're looking and you see the coat there. And then they look back and the bye-bye man kind of jumps out. And what I just laughed at was simply, all right, you know this is going on. You leave your coat there. You're not going to like put it in a closet or <laughs> something else. You're just going to keep sitting it there so that you can look at it and go, uh-oh, is that the, oh no, it's the bye-bye man! The movie was also jump scare central. There were so many moments where a character's looking at something and, you know, here it comes. Brrr! And thankfully, they didn't end on a bagul scare. But what they did do was they left three possibilities open for a sequel. So there's three ways that somebody could have been exposed to the Bye Bye Man. And I think that that was them just being really, really, really overzealous about how well this was going to do. Again, based on a book, I don't know if that's how the book ended, but it did seem very shoehorned in. Like, all right, we need to really leave a cliffhanger. Okay, let's leave a cliffhanger. Hey, let's leave another two cliffhangers. Why the hell not? Also, there was a fair amount of bad CGI. I don't know why certain things they just won't do practically. There was one character who had bloody eye sockets. And instead of just doing that with makeup effects, it was horrendous CGI. I mean, it stuck out like a sore thumb. Why wouldn't you just do something like that with makeup? I don't get that at all because it looked bad. The audience laughed. There was another thing in the movie, uh, let's say the Bye Bye Man's minion, that was uh, CG, and that looked horrendous. The Bye Bye Man himself didn't even look all that great. Uh, It was Doug Jones, and Doug Jones is awesome. Like, the guy has been in uh, some amazing practical uh, get-ups, and uh, he always manages to contort himself and make himself look really creepy. And in this, it was like dude who's kind of yellow and green and has like scars or something the bye bye man was a good idea with terrible execution the acting was bad the cg was bad the plot was kind of abnormally slow like i don't mind slow burn horror films but uh the pacing on this was just way off and really didn't do a whole lot to keep you interested The Bye Bye Man is a dull horror movie with a terrible name that has nothing even remotely scary about it Thank <laughs> you.